what's up guys? I'm Paul McFall and today I'll be showing you how to color correct and grade footage from the DJI Phantom 4. Alright, let's get started. So today I'm using Final Cut Pro X on the MacBook Pro 2016 and I have my drone clip already selected. So the first thing we want to do is achieve a white balance. So the drone is actually currently sitting here in the D-Log picture profile which means that it's very grayed out. It's kind of a gray profile that's meant to bring out as much detail in your shot as possible. So that's why we actually shoot with the D-Log profile as opposed to a standard profile. So we wanna select our drone clip and you can actually achieve a white balance either one of two ways. So you should let Final Cut Pro X do it automatically or you can do it manually yourself. So to do it automatically, which is the first thing we're gonna try, you just go over to the wand tool over here, click it and select balance color. All right, so yeah, it actually looks pretty good. Um, in order to verify that it's uh, balanced uh, pretty optimally, we can just go up to view, go down to show in viewer, click video scopes. Our video scope should appear, select this graph looking icon here and go down to RGB parade. Also, before we do that, make sure that waveform is selected and then you can click RGB Parade. The idea is actually to get all three peaks, the red, green, and blue peaks to line up. And right now they look pretty close, but they're not 100%. So I'm actually gonna manually try and just line them up so that they can be the best that they can be. And you guys get to see how you can do this manually. In order to do this, you need to go down to this magic wand icon again and click show color board. All right, so on the right hand side, your color board's gonna appear so notice that you have three options at the top of the color board. You have exposure, saturation, and color. In exposure, you have your global, which is on the far left. Then you have your shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can actually use these options to push um, more into the shadows and more into your highlights or more into the midtones. Then you have your saturation option. In saturation, you have these same options, and saturation is meant to either push more color into your film or pull more color out of your film. And then color. So color is meant to either push certain colors into the film or pull them out. So we're gonna go ahead and just use the highlights for, uh, for what we're trying to do here, which is basically achieve white balance. So go ahead and select the first circle, and looking at your RGB parade, just kind of play around with it until it's lined up completely. All right, so it may not look 100%, but it looks close enough to me. And we're just gonna go ahead and go with that. So the next thing we wanna do is actually go ahead and select the exposure icon in the color board. And we're going to push more of our shadows and more of our highlights um, optimally into the film. And then on the left-hand side, we wanna change our viewer to the histogram. So go ahead and select that icon that looks like, kinda of like a bar graph again. And then select the histogram at the very top. What we want to do here is actually line up our data, which is shown on the graph here, with the zero mark to bring out our shadows uh, optimally in the film. All right, and that's pretty much it. So once that's lined up with the zero mark, we can move on. So next, go back to the bar chart looking icon again, select it, and then go ahead down to waveform select it again, and go down to Luma. All right, so here is another tool that we like to use in order to optimally bring out our highlights as well as our shadows. We use it for both, I just prefer to use the histogram. And what we want to do is, once again, you see the 100 mark and the zero mark. Zero is to bring out your shadows, and the 100 mark is to bring out your highlights. And you wanna make sure that the top and the bottom of our data is touching both the zero mark and the 100 mark. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So go to exposure, select highlights, which is on your far right, and move up until that touches the 100 mark. About right there, and then move. If you would like, you can adjust your shadows a little bit more, even though it doesn't look like it's touching the line completely. It's actually, it actually is. You can actually see lighter marks going past the line. But if you want it darker, eh, I don't see any harm with that. So we can actually go down and touch the zero mark there. And you can actually use the midtones to adjust the look of the time of day. So if you want to push it all the way up, it makes it look like it's sunnier out. If you want to bring it down, it makes it look like it's, it's dusk or the sun is going down. In this case, uh, this was actually shot at, 
sundown. So the sun is currently going down and we have those pretty colors in the background. So we don't actually want to make it look like it's sunny because it's just going to look weird. So if you want, you can adjust that to achieve the look that you're looking for. Um, for me, I think I'm just going to bring it down a little bit, maybe negative nine there, just to make it look a little more like dusk. All right, negative 10. Looks fine to me. And all right, so now we've actually brought out our shadows, we brought out our highlights, we've adjusted our midtones, and now it's time to move on to the next step. So notice that before we had a very grayish looking image because it was shot in D-Log, and now it actually looks like there's a little bit of color in there, our shadows are more defined, and our highlights are also more defined. Over here in our viewer, you want to go ahead and select that same icon, it looks like a bar chart, and change over to vector scope. So the next step is to actually start bringing the colors out of our film clip. And to do this, we're going to use the saturation section of the color board. So if you go ahead and move to the color board, select saturation, I'm already there. You can actually just start adjusting your globals, shadows, midtones, and highlights to start bringing out color in those different areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the global a little further up. And once again, that affects you know, all of the color across the film. And I'll bring up my midtones a bit and then highlights. So we're gonna go ahead and refer back to our vector scope over here. And notice that our data has expanded and you know we're still pretty far away from the outer parameters, so I'm gonna add a little bit more color. You can see the highlights really starting to come out. You don't wanna to add too much, but I think we're good right there. The last step is to actually add a certain look to the film. So we're actually going to start a basic grade. And to do this, we're gonna use what's called a LUT or lookup table. So I actually bought a professional tool known as Color Finale. You can find it at colorgradingcentral.com. And I think it costs around 150 bucks, but if you wait a little while, they usually have discounts. So I actually got mine for about 100. So we're gonna go ahead and grab Color Finale and drag it over to our film clip. Hit this little arrow here and select under color finale open controls and then we're going to select this cube icon here this is basically the LUT utility it lets us select a LUT um, we can actually view it before we apply it and once we apply it we can actually tone it up and down to push so much of the grade into the into the film or pull it out so let's go ahead and click on LUT gallery. So here you can see what's currently in this series of LUTs. We're looking at the default cubes store LUT group. And if you hit that arrow, I have three other LUT groups, drone LUTs, impulse Z log, and impulse Z rec 709. So since this footage was actually shot in D log, well, I'm gonna go ahead and use the impulse Z log generic group. And I'm actually going to select log Fuji color 200 fc.cube. Here's the LUT gallery. This is what it should start to look like. So go ahead and get out of the LUT gallery. Go ahead, go ahead and hit apply. And now you can see that we have a totally different look to the film. So if you hit the checkbox beside color finale, you can actually see a big difference there. So I'm not going to leave it turned up at 100. I'm going to bring it down to about, about 54. I think that looks pretty good. About 58. So let's check out our clip now. All right, looks much better. So here's the original. Pretty dry, pretty gray. And then here's with our color corrections and our basic grade. And we have a cinematic clip here. So every now and then I also like to add 2.35 anamorphic aspect ratio, which is basically the bars that you see above and below the frame in most movies. 
which pretty much gives us our final look. So that's pretty much how you color correct and grade drone video. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you would like to see more content like this, please go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Till next time, please like and subscribe. I'm out. Peace. When I woke up this morning in the haters' world.